out here, even though it's only 30 minutes away. I've met a couple of you before, but mostly because you've come over to my side. Um, so I'm very happy to uh, come and chat with you a little bit. Before I start, I'll tell you that I work at an organization that is often mistaken for the Monterey Bay Aquarium, um, and that's the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. And so I brought some brochures that will tell you a little bit about us. But we're a nonprofit oceanographic research center in Moss Landing, California. We are a partner organization to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, separate board, separate budget, separate staff, um, separate mission. Uh, but we truly value the relationship we have with the Monterey Bay Aquarium. One of the things we do with our partnership is we let the aquarium do most of our outreach. And so as a research organization, which is what the research institute is, we have a staff of, as, as I said, about 220. I am the outreach person. Um, so it's not a huge priority for us, but despite that, I think we've got some really interesting opportunities for you to get involved in ways in which you could work with us. So that's what I was going to talk with you about tonight. Um, to start with, we have a brand new web page that we just started and just launched this year. Uh, this is the result of the fact that Ambari turns 30 years old in 2017. Um, so just like CEE, we're, we're in our 30th year. Uh, but unlike CEE, who's probably done a much better job than we have, our website for 29 years, we never threw anything out. So our website was just huge. We had so much stuff in there that it was actually slow. Um, and we keep getting faster connections, and the website didn't seem to be getting any faster. So we decided to essentially archive the whole site and start all over again, um, which was good. It's very painful um, because all of us had our very favorite web pages, which may not be there anymore. So if there was something you really liked from our website that you used to visit and use, and you want it back, let me know because we still have it. It's just sequestered. But if somebody asks for it, we could bring it back out into the daylight. Um, as an example, one of the things that we have on our website now is uh, more pictures, less text. This is something that has very clearly been the trend over the last few years, is that people really don't want to sit there and read text. Uh, so what we're trying to do is make our entire website much more attractive, much more engaging, and try to get people, if they go to our home page, to take that next step and to click on the story. And it's been fairly successful. Um, as of today, we're getting about 1,200 visits a day on our website, which isn't bad. All right, we're very pleased by that. And uh, more than almost two-thirds of them are taking that next step and clicking through to a story, which is great. Um, because that's what we were missing before. The downside of the new website is that, uh, let's see, about... 10 years ago, I finally got the word education on our homepage. <laughs> right, I told you, it's, it's, hard, it's a hard sell to get education uh, here. Um, with our new website, education is no longer on our homepage. So I'll tell you how to find it, and it's not easy. But I'll show you some slides. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of pictures, a lot of neat little stories, and I actually took these three days ago. And so if you looked on our homepage today, you'd see a whole different suite of stories. So we change the stories fairly often to reflect whatever's going on in current, in current um, news. We have a brand new section here called Making an Impact. This comes about because the Research Institute, we are unique in the entire world in terms of our funding source. So we get our money directly from another nonprofit organization called the David Lynn and Lucille Packard Foundation. So David Packard, founder of Hewlett Packard, one of the founders of Hewlett Packard, when he and his wife Lucille passed away, they invested <coughs> a large chunk of their family fortune into a nonprofit foundation instead of giving it to their children. All right, so they invested in this nonprofit foundation is in charge of dispersing funds. We are fortunate in that every year, for almost 30 years now, we've gotten an annual allowance from the David and Lucille Packard Foundation. Um, our annual budget is somewhere between 35 and $40 million a year. That's what we get from the Packard Foundation. That doesn't include what we ask them for when we want a new research vessel or a new re remotely operated vehicle or even a new building. We go back to the Packard Foundation and we ask them for more money. Um, the Packard Foundation does not generally fund research. So one of the things they asked us is, all this research you're doing, what difference does it make? And so this is 
our answer. So we set up a brand new site on our website to show that our research is making an impact. And so we try to highlight how we're making an impact um, using our particular research. And then finally, if you look at the footer, which is tremendous, it's huge, um, we sort of break out the top uh, five items that were at the very at the header. And we list out the menu under what's each one, which would be a pull-down menu if you're using the top menu. And education is now under our products, and it is called educational resources. So it's way down there. But, uh, but I'll show you some other shortcuts that we have. We do have some outreach in terms of social media. So if you're interested in finding out what we're doing and what's going on, I encourage you to, let's see if I can get this right, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, <laughs> something on Snapchat, I don't know what it is. Um, Instagram, is that Instagram? All right, whatever. Instagram, see? Uh, YouTube, we actually have a YouTube channel. We have our own YouTube video channel. We post a new video about once a month. Uh, and we also have an RSS feed. So if you're older, this is the original social media. Uh, th this is what the news agencies still use, our RSS feeds. It's an email that comes to your email box. Um, but I also have little cards here with those links if you want to join or follow um, any of those social media trends. And we try to post several times a day on those to try to increase exposure. So here's our Facebook page. Uh, we have our Twitter page. And we have our YouTube channel. I don't think I have a picture of Snapchat because, oh look, that, Instagram, Instagram. Um, I don't have an Instagram account or a Snapchat account, so <laughs> this, is, this is all I know about it. Um, I don't have an Instagram account or a Snapchat account because I have two sons who are 21 and 18 and they told me I can't get on there. <laughs> they don't want me on there. They don't want me finding them. And I said, that's fine. I probably don't want to know. <laughs> Um, so, educational resources, as I said before, under products. If you click on that, you'll get to our educational resources page. I wasn't sure if we'd have uh, inner uh, web access, so I actually pulled off all these frame grabs. So we have lots of educational resources that are sort of listed here. We don't like text. I was lazy, so I just copied the text from the old page, but then I also set up little icons underneath that give you a little bit more detail about some of our main programs. And so what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about each one of these different programs. There's EARTH, which is Educational Research Testing Hypotheses, which is a teacher professional development program. There are the Seymour Science Kits, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education Science Kits. Uh, and then the other two programs are our Summer Internship Program and our Seminar Program. So these are all things that are available for all of you. So to start with, the Seymour Science Kits. Seymour is the National Science Foundation um, funded, was a National Science Foundation funded program. Uh, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education. It was a multi-institutional program with centers in uh, Woods Hole, University of Hawaii, Oregon, and the Monterey Bay Farm Research Institute. Um, as part of this, the Seymour educational team put together this Beautiful science kits, really nice science kits, uh, which are all available for loan. So if you go to the website under see more science kits, you'll see six of the science kits here, which you can check out. The seventh one is the ocean conveyor belt, and it gets very little use, I think, because I only I can only fit six pictures on the page. And to get to the ocean conveyor belt, you have to click the little button to get to the next page, of which there's only one picture of the ocean conveyor belt. But if you click this, it'll take you to the University of Hawaii page that will tell you exactly what's in all the kits. So I took, I took a frame grab of the ocean acidification kit. Um, so this kit has, it's a two lesson kit that has everything you need to do experiments, activities with your students. All the lesson materials, if you want to see what the lesson plans are like, here. the whole PDF. Um, the issue, current background information, current news, They've got, if there's a PowerPoint, if there's a video, everything is linked online. So you can look at the whole thing, so you can decide whether or not you want to check out the kit. If you check out the kit, uh, you go to the link that says, you know, see if it's available, and there's five different institutions that you can check it out from. All of you should check, look at Ambari. 
because it won't do you any good to check out one from Oregon, because the way the kids work is you have to come and pick it up <laughs> and drop it off. So unless you're traveling, check out the one at Ambari, just over the hill. So all the kids, um, and the, it's just a Google calendar, which is what you're checking out. Um, so you look on the kit, see if it's available. If it's available, you just fill out the form, say when you want it, uh, and when you're going to return it. And then I get an email, and I'll confirm with you, yes, you can pick it up on this date and drop it off on that date. The ocean certification kit, just as an example, comes in a big sort of box. Um, it has enough materials for five student groups. That includes a pH sensor, a carbon dioxide sensor, as well as the vernier um, uh, not computer, but the little tiny um, data collection device that will then graph everything and then export that graph into their own computers so they can collect all the data they want off of that, as well as the bottles, the um, tubing, the sugar, the yeast, the hot water bottle to heat up the water so you can add it to the, I mean, it comes complete with everything except the water. All right? but, those, but all the kits are like that, so there's a plankton kit, there's the, uh, for middle school, there's the marine mystery kit, um, which is one that my wife uses. My wife is a middle school teacher, uh, and she uses the marine mystery kit. We used to, we used to call it, uh, it's, it's also sort of a whodunit, um, and it focuses in on coral bleaching. And so the idea is to track down and figure out who made the zooxanthellae disappear. We used to say who killed the zooxanthellae, but we decided that that wasn't good, so now it's just... Who, who, who made the Zozanthelli disappear? And there's all, all sort of culprits, and this is a dress-up game. So all the kids have to dress up in their characters, whether it's a clownfish, right, character clownfish, a lionfish, or whatever it is, they all dress up and they have scripts that they have to talk about. And it's a DNA-based activity. So they're, they've got little DNA strands that the culprit left behind at the scene of the crime, and their CSI tape, the whole bit. Um, but there's, there's all, everything you need for these activities are all in the kits. Oh, sixth grade, is it? Middle school. Middle school. Yeah. Or elementary school, if you do elementary school. If you, it's a fun activity for that. High school, the costumes wouldn't really fit. And I'm not yeah. sure they would be into dressing up in those costumes. Um, Earth uh, stands for Educational Research Testing Hypotheses. This is a program, a teacher professional program that I started in 2003, and, and Jeff's participated before, so you can ask him about it. Um, this was based on the fact that for 20 years, because I've been around for a long time, uh, 20 years I've been participating in professional development workshops, and I used to see teachers leave professional development workshops with bags and boxes of goodies, right? and all these great ideas and activities that they had participated in that they really liked. Um, and then I'd run into the teachers, you know, in six months or a year later, and I'd say, so how did that activity go? And they never used it. Right? The box was under their desk, or in the classroom, or in the closet, or they didn't even know where the box was. Um, and, and what I got from talking to them, we actually, I actually got as many teachers as I put together in a room for three days, and I asked them, if you could have the ideal science workshop, professional development workshop, what would it look like? And that's how we developed the Earth teacher professional development workshop. And so I have flyers here that will tell you a little bit about it. So what the teacher said is that they want to have the opportunity to talk to scientists just like Vita Science is doing, learn about their data, share the stories, talk, get, get to know the scientists. So not just the research, but the stories that you learn from the scientists. Like the fact that most of our good research comes about as complete accidents. Right? You don't get that from reading the research papers. You get that from talking to the scientists. Um, getting access to the scientists' data, and so the goal of the Earth Teacher Professional De Development Program is to get real data into the classroom. So you get the data sets from the instructors, from the researchers, and you use those in your classroom. For me, the fun part about the workshop is that I expose the researchers and the educators together for two days, and then we have usually a third day where we do something a little less um, difficult on the brain, a little, a little more fun, a little more enjoyable, a field trip or something. Then you spend an entire day working on lesson plans based on your two days of chatting and working with the researchers and learning about their data sets. And then we have a half day where you actually present your lesson plans. And this to me is great because that means I don't have to do anything. 
except, except get my friends and colleagues, the researchers, to come and talk to my friends and colleagues, the educators. And I, I just sit back and sort of let the magic happen. Now, the other thing about Earth and, and the program is that um, the teacher said, you know, we love professional development, but we hate paying for it. And this is a great program because you're not being charged for professional development, but many programs do charge you. Um, so Earth covers everything, all your expenses. And that's kind of neat because we've now held Earth all over the United States. All right, so, for instance, one of the places we went was Alaska. I thought we'd have a lot of applications, but we didn't. All right, Alaska was actually very non-competitive. It turned out the big one was Hawaii. <laughs> Oddly enough, everybody wanted to go to Hawaii, not Alaska. I thought it'd be the reverse. Uh, next um, summer, so this, just this past year, we were at Rutgers, um, Rutgers in New Jersey, uh, and we did a whole workshop on polar regions. This is a result because we're working with Rutgers on a new National Science Foundation grant to get polar research data into the classrooms. Um, and so we are working on uh, working, we're working on trying to get that data into the classrooms. We're going to be running some local workshops here. And so now I also have all your emails, so you'll also hear from me about polar workshops. Um, but for the last year and next year, we're going to be doing polar data. Next year's Earth workshop will be on Catalina Island because we're going to be working with University of Southern California as well. So we're going to be using their marine lab facilities at Two Harbors. So uh, if you're interested in doing a teacher workshop on Catalina Island, all expenses covered, take a look at the Earth website. So we have a flyer, and then I also have, I also have business cards here. It's four and a half days, um, and I will work you. Don't, don't misunderstand. It's not just going to be a vacation. You will work like you, you, you haven't worked in a long time. A lot of content that we're going to be giving you and putting into your head, and then you're going to spend the whole day Thursday creating, and then Friday you present. If you have a chance, take a look at the lessons. Um, the, probably the best way to look at this is look at each individual workshop schedule, because we have all the workshops online. Um, and so this was uh, just this past summer's workshop. Uh, we usually try to get 10 local teachers, so we'll, we'll focus in on getting around uh, 8 to 12 teachers from around Los Angeles, so we don't have to pay as much travel expenses. Um, but then the other teachers will come from anywhere in the U.S. Um, and so if you're interested... That's summer 2017? 20, uh, summer 2017. The best way to keep track of our of Earth, because um, I really don't send out emails about Earth to teachers, is to join our Facebook page. You can join as anybody you want. You don't have to use your real name. And I understand this, right? So my wife is on Facebook, but she uses her maiden name because she has no desire to let her students find her. And she doesn't want her students trying to be her friend or see what she posts, um, but she does want a Facebook page so she can keep tabs with her family. Um, so if you just want to come up with your own creative name and follow us just because you want to keep track of Earth, that's fine. All right? we, let, we let everybody join our Earth page. All right, seminars. Um, seminars are at the Research Institute. They're not at the best time for teachers, and I realize that, and I'm sorry. They are at 11 o'clock on Wednesdays. <laughs> they used to be at 3 o'clock on Wednesdays, uh, but the problem with the 3 o'clock seminar is that everybody's tired. Everybody's a little sleepy. Uh, and the biggest problem for a seminar speaker, when we bring seminar speakers in, we like to chat with them. And if we brought a seminar speaker in to give a 3 o'clock seminar, they'd show up at the Research Institute at 10, and they'd spend five hours chatting with people, telling everybody what they're going to say in their seminar. Um, and that gets really repetitive. By having a seminar at 11 o'clock, they could show up at 10, give their seminar, and then spend the rest of the afternoon talking to people about what they already talked about. And that's much more productive. It's much more interactive, and it's much better for their seminar speaker and for the staff. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we changed it. Our seminar coming up tomorrow is by Francis Wies, who's the Marine Technical League at Santec, which is up in the Arctic. So he's going to talk about marine ecosystems and management in a world that is changing incredibly. From open, the sea ice disappearing and the open channel going across the Arctic ice cap um, to the permafrost starting to melt and causing the pipeline to sort of start to sag in places that nobody ever thought it would because they built it on permafrost. Permanent 
apparently frozen. Turns out, maybe not. <laughs> um, so things are really changing in the Arctic, and he's going to talk about that a little bit. But if you can, and you're interested, please do come to our seminars. They are open to anybody, um, and we welcome all of you to show up. Especially during the summer, because we do have se uh, seminars going on year-round. Our internship program, 10 weeks in the summer, June, July, August, full-time. Uh, it is open to undergraduate students, graduate students, and educators. So if you want to come and work with us for 10 weeks, do it. Why not? <laughs> um, this year, starting in 2017, our new salary will be $15 an hour. Right, Full-time, 40 hours a week. So $6,000 for the summer for 10 weeks worth of work. Uh, and I really would love to get more educators involved in our internship program. So if you're interested, consider it. All right. Our internship program, our hours, most of you will probably want to know what our hours are. We work Monday through Friday. We don't work on weekends. So that's good. You get your weekends done. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we work on what we call the 980 schedule. All right. So it's a staggered schedule. That means we work nine days, 80 hours in nine days. So Monday through Thursday are nine hour days. One Friday is an eight hour day. One Friday is a no work day. So that means every other week is a three day weekend. That's kind of nice. We really like it. We originally did it so we cut down on commute, cut down on energy consumption, turn the lights out, just save energy all around. Um, now we just do it because we can't think of working five days a week anymore. We really enjoy it. But we have a lot of different projects a lot of different categories. We start advertising this program uh, in mid-November. Uh, we list potential projects by early December, and we close applications in February. So if you're interested, consider it. If you know some of your alumni who might be good for us, let them know about it. Our internship, our internship program has been running for 20 years. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It is a ra rather unique internship program. Because the idea is to connect students and educators with career options. It's not to get more students in STEM, right, which is more typical of something like the National Science Foundation, which runs an internship program as well, but they want to get more students in STEM careers. That's not necessarily my focus or the Institute's focus. Our focus is to connect students and educators with career options. What we've found is that some students will come and work with us for 10 weeks, and at the end of the 10 weeks, they'll tell me that they never want to do research again in their life. <laughs> and to me, that's a win. That means they've figured something out that they might not have known before. Because it turns out, real research is really not as exciting as it might seem. You might go out to see and collect, go out to see for five days and collect this great data, and have a blast, whales, you know, all kinds of strange animals, have a wonderful day, then you're going to come back to shore and you're going to spend nine weeks at a computer analyzing all that data. That's the part they don't tell you in college. <laughs> right? They tell you about all the fun stuff, but they don't tell you about sitting in a cubicle, staring at a computer, trying to create something. And for some of our students, they have no desire to do that for the rest of their, their lives. And that's perfectly understandable. A lot of our students are now working for the aquarium. Because in the process, because we, we try to do a lot of things with, different, with interns from different institutions, they decided that what they really like doing, instead of sitting in a cubicle looking at a computer, is talking to people. And so they've gotten positions, either as teachers or as educators, um, at the aquarium or some other organizations. And that, to me, is a perfect scenario, because that's a good use. That's a, exactly what our objective is. is for, students and educators with career options, whatever those options might be. So here are some of our interns uh, working on different projects, all different ages, all different backgrounds. The focus is really on the interns' professional development. The mentors, who are our staff, do not expect to get a paper out of the project. It would be nice if it happens, but that's not the goal. The goal, again, is to try to help the intern figure out what to do or what's out there. We always try to get the interns out to sea at least one day. Many of them spend more time. These are some of the <coughs> quotes I get. Um, this, this one is a, uh, this person was actually an educator who was working in the Marine, Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. 
who decided to quit school and go back into research to get his master's degree because he really got excited about working in marine protected areas. Not really my ideal outcome, because I kind of like to have the teacher stay in the classroom to excite more students, but that's what he decided he really wanted to do, and he's still doing it. So he's now living in Fiji, working in marine protected areas. Poor guy. He's happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this person, I actually came out of the internship more confused about where my path was headed. The reason exposure to so many different aspects of marine science and engineering that I had no idea existed. This is a good thing. This is Anne-Marie Thomas who is now a professor of engineering at the University of St. Paul in Minnesota. And she is a, a maker. She's one of these people who makes things. And her, one of the things she made or created was simple circuits. Or, um, which if you've never tried, silly circuits. Silly circuits? Make it silly circuits. If you've never tried, it's, it's a fabulous invention. And it's, it's really simple. It's Play-Doh, conductive Play-Doh and non-conductive Play-Doh. Battery and wires and lights. And the recipes are all online. You can make your own conductive play doh. You can make your own non conductive play doh. It's just a matter of adding salt to the recipe. That makes it conductive. And then you have the non conductive with no salt. And the kids can build things and put wires in and with the batteries make lights light up or make motors turn around. Really nice, all grade levels, easy way to talk about um, circuitry and electronics. This is uh, this past summer's intern crop. Our open house. You guys are lucky. Usually our open house is during the summer. This year our open house hasn't happened yet. So October 15th. That's coming up in three weeks. Uh, Saturday, 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we will open uh, up our laboratories and take everything in our lab and put it out in the parking lot. I, I invite you, your students, anybody who wants to come, um, to come out and take a look at what we're doing. It's the one day a year where Ambari does outreach, planned outreach. <clears throat> um, normally we don't bring people in or tours in because our laboratories are just a little bit too small. So if you want to come out, come on out to Moss Landing in October. Maybe we'll even have some sun. Who knows? <laughs> it's strange that things have happened. So I have our annual report here, I didn't bring too many copies of our annual report, it's all online, but this lists all the different projects that are going on at the Research Institute. I brought Earth, I brought my business cards, if you want one. Um, this weekend, we're having a fundraiser for Ocean Trilogy. Um, Saturday, October 1st, 4 to 7.30 at the Monterey Museum of Art. Uh, one of the things we've decided to do is try to reach new audiences through novel ways. And so this one is working with a modern dance troupe to try to get across the message that the, about the ocean and the beauty and uh, importance of the ocean to an audience that would usually not come to a science lecture, the ones that go to dance concerts. Um, and it's been really, we did this three years ago and it was so successful that we actually got invited to the Smithsonian back east to do the performance, um, which, is, which is a lot of fun, fabulous. Uh, so I'll be talking at this one. Um, uh, they gave me they gave me ten minutes to talk uh, to talk about the beauty, importance, and why we should save the ocean. So you're not one of the dancers? No, I'm not one of the dancers, and that's a good thing. So uh, there'll be dancers from Diablo Ballet, a performance by the rap artist Baba Brinkman, uh, music by guitarist Juan Sanchez, and a presentation by me, and a live auction. Um, so if you're interested in this, uh, we have, I have that part up there as well. And the last giveaway I have is our website on a pencil that's made out of recycled money. So, um, I, don't think, I don't think you could do anything with the recycled money. That's kind of fun. Um, but look, I finished with five minutes to spare. So that means I have five minutes for questions before we have dinner. Dinner's next on the schedule. Yes? 